Hi guys, I hope that this will be a fairly short video. Um, what I want to do is I want to look and think about the graphs of y equals e to the x and y is equal to ln x. Now it's it's quite important that you understand the shapes of uh, certain graphs like y equals x squared, y equals the square root of x, uh, y equals one divided by x, right? These basic shapes. Um, so we're gonna look at these shapes in particular today. So let's get to it. Uh, firstly, this is the graph of y equals e to the x. I'm just going to start by showing you, but let's try to explain why it looks like that. First thing to point out is this is actually the same as any exponential graph. That is, if I've got y equals 2 to the x, it's the same basic shape. Why is that? Well, because if you think about it, let's start with this point here, right? the, uh, the uh, y-intercept. Well, when x is equal to 0, then e to the power of 0 is equal to 1, right? Because we know from one of our exponential rules that anything to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So we expect that that should be our y-intercept. Now let's think about what's, what's happening over here on the right-hand side, right, as x is getting bigger. Well, what's happening there is you're getting, um, for example, if you have e to the power 1, and then e to the power 2, e to the power 3, each time what you're doing is you're multiplying by e. Right? Remember, e is just a number. The number is roughly equal to 2.71. So what's going to happen on the right-hand side is your value of y is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, right? So it's going to shoot off up to infinity. So that's what we see here on the right-hand side, right? It's, it's growing and growing and growing and growing. Well, what's going to happen on the left-hand side? What's, what's happening over here? Well, as you see, as x is getting more negative, right, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, you're getting closer and closer and closer to the x-axis. In other words, the graph of e to the x is getting closer and closer to 0. Let's try to figure out why that is. Firstly, remember that if I've got um, e to the power of negative 1, what does that mean? That means 1 divided by e, right, because that's one of our exponential rules. So what does uh, e to the power of negative 2 mean? It means 1 divided by e squared. And e to the power of negative 3 is 1 divided by e cubed. So in other words, as we get more and more negative, what's going to happen is we're going to have 1 divided by e to a really, really, really big number. And of course, as this number here gets bigger and bigger and bigger, okay, then 1 divided by that is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. It's going to get closer and closer to 0. So what we see for the exponential function is, uh, we could write it kind of more formally as this, as x approaches negative infinity, right, as it gets really, 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 really small, then e to the power of x is going to approach zero, right? Because what's happening is we've got uh, e to the power of, uh, of a negative really big number, um, and that's going to be one divided by uh, a really, really big number, and that's going to approach zero. Okay, so our graph is going to get closer and closer to zero there. Okay, so um, uh, I hope that uh, you're able to, to see that graph and, and to understand some of the reasons for it. But most importantly, if you struggle with, with the reasons, just, just try to memorize the basic shape, right? The basic shape is it goes through the y-axis at 1. It grows um, uh, exponentially on the right-hand side, so it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And on the left-hand side, it gets closer and closer and closer to zero. Okay, that's the key idea. Well, if that's the case, what would the graph of ln x look like? Well, what is ln x? We start with the graph y equals e to the x. Then we can rearrange that into exponential, for, into logarithmic form. We get x is equal to ln y. What does this mean? It means that these two things here are inverse functions, right? The, the logarithmic form is the inverse of the exponential form. So if we were to say, for example, that uh, f of x is equal to e to the x, then that means that the inverse function, f inverse x, is equal to ln x. And so that's going to be really helpful because if, if we already know what the graph of e to the x looks like, then we will be able to work out 
what the inverse function looks like. Let's have a look at that so far. Let me draw out the sketch. So we already said that the uh, exponential function is going to look like this. Something like that. Remember, how do we find an inverse function? Well, an inverse function is a reflection in the line y equals x. So let's draw that line, the line y equals x. Okay, like that. So what would a reflection look like? A reflection, I'm going to go through that point there. It's going to look something like that. So in other words, the graph of ln x, what's going to happen? It's going to get closer and closer and closer to the y-axis, right? So x is going to get closer and closer to zero. And on the uh, right-hand side, right, what's going to happen is it's going to keep growing and growing and growing and growing and growing and growing, and growing in the x-direction. So this is the graph of ln x, okay? So you want to memorize what the graph of e to x looks like. And basically, you can see uh, that ln x is going to be the inverse function of that. And so it's the reflection in the line y equals x. Well, having done that, I think let's uh, just have a quick look at shifting and scaling some of this. So in order to do this, we're going to look at Desmos. OK, so here is our Desmos. And as you can see, I've sketched the graph of e to the x uh, in blue. Uh, ln x in red and uh, the line y equals x in black there to show that the two are inverse functions because the two are reflections. Well, let's just let's just hide these two and let's think about how we can shift this to the to the right. I want to shift this to the right by two. Remember, I replace x with x minus two. Oh, sorry, x minus two. Ah, let me just put that in brackets. Probably there we go. Replace x with x minus two and shift it to the right by two. I want to shift it to the left by one. Replace x with x plus 1. There you go. I've shifted it to the left by 1. Uh, let's say I wanted to shift it up by, by 1. Well, I can replace y with y minus 1. That shifts it up by 1. Or the same thing is I'm adding 1 to this side. Right, same thing. Let's say I want to squash this graph in the x direction by 2. So I replace the x with 2x. There you go. Squashed it by 2. I want to... Um, Stretch this graph in the y direction by 3. I replace y with y divided by 3. Okay. Or the same thing, I could say I put 3y. Okay, so it's kind of some of the shifting and scaling things. What if I wanted to reflect this in the x-axis? I replace y with minus y. Like that. What if I wanted to reflect it in the uh, y-axis? I replace x with minus x. And I get that. Okay, so that's reflection uh, axis. Let's now look at the graph of ln. Again, the same thing. Let's say I want to shift this to the right by 2. I replace x with x minus 2. I've shifted it to the right. Let's say I want to shift it to the left by 1. I replace x with x plus 1. Say I want to shift it up by 3. Replace y with y minus 3. I've shifted it up. Let's say I want to squash it in the x direction by 2. I replace x with 2x. So what I'm trying to show you, right, is the same rules of shifting, scaling, reflecting, squashing, all of that stuff. It's the same thing um, with these functions. So the key thing is, can you remember what these two functions look like, e to the x and ln x? And are you then able to use that information to figure out how they uh, shift and stretch? If you can do that, then you should be able to do quite a few of these questions. Okay, thank you, guys. Take care. I will see you next time.